let's go back to our derivative model starting point. We know that the EBITDA margin is equal to EBITDA divided by revenue, and this allows us to replace EBITDA in our formulas with the product of revenue and EBITDA margin. When we run this through the calculus described in VC104, the EBITDA growth splits up into two new value drivers, one for revenue growth that includes the change in revenue and the average holding period EBITDA margin, and another for EBITDA margin expansion that includes the change in the EBITDA margin and the average holding period revenue. Now, this is the correct spot to introduce the fact that EBITDA equals revenue minus COGS minus SG&A. We plug that into the EBITDA margin formula here. In the numerator, R minus COGS is equal to the gross profit or GP, so we can make that substitution. Then we can split up the gross profit and the SG&A values into two terms that have revenue as a common denominator. The first value, gross profit divided by revenue, is the company's gross profit margin or simply gross margin on the P&L. It's a number that's often provided in GP fundraising materials or fund reporting materials, and we'll define it as GM. The second value, SG&A over revenue, is not a common accounting term, but we'll define it here as the operating expense margin, or OM. You will not find this number on the quarterly report, but you can calculate it from the gross margin minus the EBITDA margin. And this means that we can define the EBITDA margin as the gross profit margin minus the operating expense margin. Since this is true, algebra says that it must also be true that the change in the EBITDA margin is equal to the change in the gross profit margin minus the change in the operating expense margin. You can now plug this into the EBITDA margin expansion above, giving us two new value drivers, gross margin expansion, which is driven by an increase in the gross profit margin, and operating margin reduction, which is driven by a decrease in the operating expense margin. 